Hello, everybody. I'm here with Andrea Sims, and we're going to be talking about recruiter enablement. So, Andrea, thank you very much for taking the time to join me today. Just give us a quick introduction. Who are you and what do you do? Thanks, Adam. I'm Andrea Sims. I've, I'm head of recruitment at Skanska. OK, what's Skanska for those that don't know? Uh, Skanska is one of the top construction companies in the UK. We're a Swedish based company, but we've got a really big presence within the UK. Uh, one of the things that I notice every time I see a Skanska sign is I, I look at what it's building and it's something absolutely gargantuan. I thought you were going to moan about highways then and no. how we kind of get you in traffic jams. So Not that's good. All. No, just very, very uh, significant projects. So we're going to talk about recruiter enablement. First of all, what 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 to you is it? What's recruiter enablement? Um, I think it's about providing teams with the right processes, the right tools and the right training to use those processes and tools um, and just reviewing them um, consistently and effectively. Yes. OK, uh, tell me about some of the things that you have maybe done over the years which have been effective in terms of making teams more productive and successful. Sure. So if I start with my current team within Skanska, so there's about 15 of us within the team. We've got really great tools. We've got access to some really, really good systems, which means that we can just be really effective. We can be really agile in what we do. And it just makes our jobs a lot more kind of effective in what we do. I think in other companies I've worked in, you literally have an Excel spreadsheet as a a tracker, um, you know, which terrifies me from a GDPR, every type of aspect. Um, but I think if, you know, you can get those good tools or just make them work for you to mean that, you know, you can be agile and scale up or scale down when you need to. Yes. What are some of the problems uh, that can occur if we don't enable our recruiters effectively? Um, I think it just means that you can't respond quickly if you suddenly, certainly in construction, if we suddenly get a really big project and you've got to build overnight a, a team of people, if you don't have that really good ATS, it's very difficult to be able to do that or just, you know, have the, that kind of internal view in terms of who do you have where and what can they do. Um, it just takes a lot longer to be able to respond to a project environment. Yeah. You know the construction world pretty well. So like just for um, general industry insights, what's what's the kind of environment like for, for recruitment in construction just now? Um, I think it's changing. I think historically we were almost viewed as a bit of a nuisance, you know, the businesses knew that they needed us but we weren't really partners but I think these days we're very much partners with all parts of the business um, across every function um, because we have an impact on every function we recruit for every different area of the business um, so I've definitely definitely seen a change and I think a lot more frequently as recruiters we get invited to those senior leadership, executive leadership meetings and, you know, we present what we're doing and the, those teams are then really bought into what we're doing, which really helps give us that visibility and just gain that respect that we need and helps us deliver. Yes. What about candidates? Obviously, in the UK, there's been a, um, a lot of dynamism in terms of like, people available in different industries how, what, what's happening in in construction is there enough people or not enough or what's going on there's not enough people and obviously brexit has had a, a huge impact on that for us we don't deal quite so much in the blue collar um but no there's there's not enough people the skills that we need are changing so it's quite a challenge to be able to forecast what the skills are going to be in five years time, you know, things like how are AI and digitalization going to impact what we do um, in terms of what we're doing now. So the people we need now are going to be different to what we're going to need going forwards. 
So it's quite tricky in terms of recruiting and being able to identify those individuals with the behaviours that are going to be able to keep up with that demand and, and change. Yeah. Well, it's such a dynamic industry. It's one of the ones that I really like because there's always something new happening. So, yeah. Andrea, thank you very much for taking the time to come and join me today. Really enjoyed it and um, hopefully see you again soon. Brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs>